Alrighty, hello everyone and welcome to GR Radio. This is the official podcast of GameRevolution.com. Your number <laughs> one, one source. Your trousers. Thank you. <laughs> just right, I'm just gonna get unzip. <laughs> <laughs> wow, no. I didn't know how, that, how loud that would be. But that was pretty loud. Uh, your um, number one source for gaming and tech news, guys, reviews, and other features and zipping noises. Uh, I'm your host, <laughs> Mac Ashworth, lead editor at Game Revolution and at Gaming with Mac on Twitter. I'm Paul Tambora, executive editor at Game Revolution and on Twitter at Paul Tambora. I'm Jason Faulkner, I'm senior editor at Game Revolution. You can find me at Jason Faulkner. And I'm Michael Larry, I'm features editor here, and I'm on Twitter at Orange Flavored. And that was not my pants. I'm not back on. Pants. I'm wearing gym shorts. And you know, you are now. You are now. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to prove it. Uh, this is I'm your no, weekly okay. podcast, currently available on Twitch and YouTube, in which we run through the biggest gaming news stories, features, and other re- and reviews. That's what we've done. We've published. Mm-hmm. Uh, this week, we'll be talking about The Outer Worlds, Overwatch on Switch, a new, a potential new Batman game, and lots, lots more. But first, let's kick things off with what have we been playing? Paul, what have you been playing? Say the words. Say the words. Find the outer world. Ah, oh, snap. Yeah. Uh, I love it. Oh, I have really enjoyed my time with it. I am getting quite far through my second playthrough now. Put a lot of hours in. Probably played it for about if about fifty hours now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's basically I think the best way to describe it is your nostalgia goggles for fallout 3 and fallout new vegas that when you like look back at those games and you kind of in i do as fans of both of both of those games uh you look back and um like you have a different perception of what they were like you kind of ignore the bugs that Mm. they had like the weird issues with fallout 3 you know the unfriendly user interface and everything and you can kind of overlook all that uh, in your own head but when you go back to it all of those things are really prominent as we found with like fallout 76 <laughs> where it's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, there are a lot of problems with this franchise and the fact that it stayed the same for this this length of time is i mean even fallout bad. 4 people were kind of fallout, yeah, fallout, 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 i didn't i didn't get into fallout 4 whatsoever because i felt like the industry had passed it by the outer worlds is basically fallout but with all of that stuff the majority of that stuff the important parts of that stuff removed uh performance it runs really well uh just in terms of the lack of bugs and everything ps4 right yeah ps4 pro it's still like 30 frames per second so it's not like a super super smooth experience but i mean just in terms of there being like no visual glitches audio glitches or anything i know that's a weird way to start off complimenting something because that should be like a standard like with there's not going to be visual errors or anything like that but it's just so weird playing a game that has got all of the good bits of fallout that has eradicated the vast majority of the bits that i hate about that series and then has just really polished it up um so yeah it's I started off my first playthrough, uh, like trying to. I was trying to play the asshole a little bit, like just trying to feel out what that would be like. But then the dialogue, everything is so well written that, and the characters like feel super sympathetic that eventually I found myself just becoming thoroughly like compelled by all of their little stories, <laughs> yeah. and then just like becoming a part of their universe really quickly. Like, I was surprised at how quickly I just got into it and I was, like, you know, helping all my companions and everything. Uh, the the depth in terms of the dialogue paths that you can go down, the different uh, avenues that you can go down throughout each quest is super impressive. Uh, like, from one playthrough scene, uh, there's an, I'm not going to spoil anything, but there's an, uh, there's an earlier mission, a main quest line mission, where there are, uh, there's a big decision that you need to make, basically. Uh, nothing ever kind of reaches the Fallout 3, are you going to nuke a town kind of decision. <laughs> it's, it's not anything that's like that, but it, it's a lot more nuanced, like the decisions that you can make there. So it's not like Fallout 3, press this button and then this town goes. There is a lot of morally grey areas to everything that you do. Like there's no, there never feels like a particular dialogue path that you're going down until I'd say the later stages of the game where it gets a little bit more black and white, but won't spoil it, but it does. 
Uh, but I would even argue that I don't. I have. I have yet. I'm at the last mission. I have yet to find a a choice that I found was like, all right, this is the Paragon one. This is the Renegade one. They're all like, sure. Pretty but like, there's even one that I left because I didn't know what to do. I just left it. So, oh really? What? Because you were just like morally conflicted. So you yeah, just it's the one with the iconoclasts and the other sure. guy. Yeah, I, I yeah. just didn't know what to do. So yeah, yeah. We'll see again. Uh, not spoiling anything, but that that quest that you've that you've mentioned. There were actually like there are there are two seem there are seemingly two paths that you can go down, but then there are branching trees within those paths that would oh, eventually. That would eventually, if you follow certain dialogue choices and make certain decisions prior to that, in completely unrelated quests. So there, it isn't to do with that quest. If you make certain choices in a different quest, then you oh. can get different dialogue paths for that quest. Um, which I realised as I was playing, and then I realised that I'd actually lock myself out from making the decision that I wanted to make. But my own choices throughout that game that were a little bit more unsavoury had prevented me from going down that route. But that happens like throughout the course of the game, uh, where a little decision you make in one area could have a really debilitating, uh, destabilising impact somewhere else. Um, and it's just it, it really like brings you in uh, into its world and it uh, unlike a lot of Fallout games I feel like where they show their hand quite quickly a lot of like the um, a lot of the most memorable memorable parts of Fallout games like Fallout 3 as I mentioned with the nuke and then Fallout 4 with the nuke <laughs> like a lot of that stuff is very early on like the most memorable parts mm. of those games the difference with the Outer Worlds is I felt like it just ramps it up um yeah. as you're going gone and then towards the end uh really I, I again i don't know what the mileage will vary in terms of if you make choices whether you will have as similarly satisfying conclusion but to, at the end when i reached the conclusion the first time around i thought right well, all of these narrative threads have tied themselves up very well um <coughs> i like all my decisions i felt like they had very reasonable outcomes for um yeah uh, towards its conclusion i will say that i think in terms of negative parts of the game i will say that it, it it's impossible to mention it without bringing up fallout regardless which i think is fine obsidian made it they're the developers of fallout new vegas so they should be able to lean on fallout they have taken they have had a go at that franchise before they made uh, one of the games that people value the most in that particular franchise even though you know, it had it was buggy as hell and everything, but a lot of people love New Vegas, uh, so I think they should be able to have a crack at the whip in terms of that. But it is lacking its own like visual identity. Um, the game is set in basically an alternate version of the US, uh, where like mega corporations have been allowed to. Um, well, it's not on Earth, but yeah, and I think I know what you're saying. Yeah, no, it's it's yeah, sorry, yeah, it's it's basically it's a, it's an alternate version of the US has basically spiraled. Yeah. yeah, has no, but it has spiraled into it's like Roosevelt never got in. Uh, it has spiraled into a bit where like mega corporations can take over, and then it builds up to the 23rd century. But w with like Fallout, um, obviously, it's like nukes took place at a time where like technology had had it, like stagnated and st not stagnated like the 50s kind of never ended in fallout that was like its aesthetic wasn't it yeah. like in the 40s and 50s it carried a lot of that, that over in the outer world the for the the 40s and 50s stuff is still there like visually it looks very very similar so it's i it does it takes you out of it a bit when it's just like why does it look so much like fallout mm. i don't understand why it looks like fallout as much as it does um which is fine uh because i feel like a lot of fallout fans will take to it uh will appreciate that it looks like that but then you just think you could have probably done something that's a little bit more interesting uh the the communities the towns that all have that ramshackle fallout vibe about them uh there's there's one Again, not spoiling anything. <laughs> There's like one area in the game that's distinctly not Fallout, uh, one planet that you that you venture to. Um, you're thinking what that could be. Now. Yeah, is it? Yeah, I mean, the, you can the, say the planet name, right? I can't remember the planet name. There's, is there's, the there's, there's, yeah, no, no, it's not the, the monarch. It's definitely fall out. Uh, but there's there's one that you like venture to. It's kind of like it's it's roughly near the end. Um, you do. I think you do get to the end by going there. 
I'm not going to spoil it. All right. There's one yeah. uh, that, that like is its own take on it and stuff. And that's like one of the most interesting areas in the game. Um, and I just, I wish there was, there was more like that. The ga- it also like obviously Fallout is just all in one open world map. This is a series of planets that each have their own open world map. But on each of those planets, there's usually like two or uh, two communities. So there'll be two mainly, like, there'll be two populated areas you can explore. And then a lot of like negative space in between. It's okay to like explore it and stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it feels fine, but there's not really many like random quests that you can fall into and stuff. There's not any, you're wandering through the wasteland and then suddenly you come across an NPC. I, I rarely found any of those I don't know if you found any Michael I I did yeah I was uh I was just I found this like little tiny camp and then I just shot all the bandits and there was like a uh she there was a lady who was like a that was obviously being taken hostage so I yeah. talked to her and I saved her well actually I shot a plasma grenade near her and I was like oh that's person oh she's dead so I reloaded <laughs> and then and then I went and found her and then she's like oh yeah I own a shop and then uh, I saved her, and she was like, I'll give you a discount if you come to my shop. And then her shop is just in the wasteland, so it was, like, a nice way to, like, oh, okay. tie in this, hey, we probably need a marketplace right here between the two areas. Let's put a little quest in there. Um, and so that was kind of cool. And then she has her own, like, little uh, motivations and stuff. It's like, this is a throwaway character I just found. I thought that was really cool. That's nice. But, I, yeah. found a, I found a couple going through Monarch, but I felt kind of, like, more major quests not anything that was like a little thing that i could do or anything like that i didn't really feel those but also like there isn't really a lot of peddling around um these open worlds because fast travel is completely free like in fallout obviously yeah. you have to pay a little bit to go and travel further out and stuff so it's encouraged that you explore because you don't want to waste all of your cash on fast traveling in the outer worlds you can just fast travel wherever all the time and the world so. is smaller too and it, the, like you said yeah. there's no costs and so it's like it, you just yeah. have to sit through a loading screen so there's like really no no there's no, there's downside. Like no downside really well, you, just, you, might, you might miss some quests but like he said there's not uh there are some quests you'll randomly find and some quests that don't that are just kind of in the world but like you won't really probably miss that much uh no, i did no, fast, no. i usually don't fast travel in these games but i fast traveled like once in a while you know just to save some time I thought it really helped with pacing. Like I found that to be an issue with a, a lot of games like this, not just not just the Fallout series, is that the pacing can really come to a grinding halt when you're like in the heat of a particularly major plot point, but then you have to go and fart about on your horse for like an hour. Yeah, yeah. Like that always like takes me out of it. In this, it was like I'm reaching the final stretch of the game. Fast travel, fast travel, fast travel. Like I was just like the pacing, like really um really benefited from that so i never really felt like i was kept out of the action and i wasn't forced to just trundle the waste not that it's not a waste i'm going to keep calling it a waste it's not a wasteland it's it's perfect it kind, of place. it kind of is a wasteland well the whole thing is that it's these planets in this halcyon star system are not particularly well populated um because they are colonizing the, the, the beacon they've been sent from earth or they was at least uh and there's they're being colonized so there's no colonies of people but these planets aside from one uh, that you can go to um aren't really well populated there are sporadic little communities yeah. throughout them so it makes sense in terms of in terms of the games well but i do kind of wish there was uh you know there was there was a little bit more to encourage you to explore i felt like the, you know the I, I, as much as i like fast traveling around i would have liked it if i felt like me just going out on my own was going to lead to more random events like that and me finding things but 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 on the other hand i feel like you know fallout is a series that's published by bethesda really really huge publisher always launches with a ton of bugs as we've seen with fallout 76 yeah had a really really awful launch Felt really rushed, uh, empty, um, you know, using incredibly similar to the other games, but then somehow worse uh, just because of the multiplayer elements being thrown in. Really, really troubled launch. And then you have something like this smaller publisher, uh, you know, not as big developer. That's just incredibly well polished for, for what it is. Again, lower frame rate, 30 frames per second, whatever. I, you but know, it, I didn't ever have, I played on base PS4 and I didn't have 
any frame rate issues or really any bugs. Of, no, no, I didn't have stuttering Nuts. or anything. Really. I saw some people on Twitter saying they felt there was a bit of stuttering in movement. I never really found no, that I never found it either. At all. And I, I, I will find it. I will find a bad frame rate if... Yeah, and I thought, I thought it looked like really nice for what it was. Like it, it was missing the potato faces of a Fallout game. <laughs> but the faces weren't exactly yeah. like superbly animated, but I could get what the characters were going for with the They're expression. lively enough. Yeah, and yeah. I, I never like, went into Uncanny Valley, and it never no. made me feel like I was watching like a bunch of ventriloquist dummies, which is the case with like Elder Scrolls and Fallout. So you know, on yeah. real people, I could I could you know get involved in what they were saying. And there's some really nice companion quests and stuff. Um, I like yeah, all, the, all the companions uh, are really cool. That you and you can get them like almost right off the bat if you just know where to look yes you can um, unlike me on my first playthrough where i went through the entire <laughs> game with three companions oh man the entire game and you and have to get it. two of them so you only found one is that yeah one? i only found <laughs> one i found one in monarch and then i was like i love my three people and then just carried on with them and <laughs> i'm really funny. sad because there is one particular companion who i'm now using in my second playthrough who i love uh i'm not gonna uh, I'm, I'm not gonna say but i love is it the one that's on the ship already no, no, it's, oh, not, it's not that one. No, it's that not one's that cool. One. No, it's uh, the first planet, uh, first planet that you meet them. Um, but yeah, there's one that you can get particularly <laughs> early on uh, in the church. Okay, yeah, yeah. I love yeah. that guy, and uh, you know, I wish I would have had him throughout my first playthrough. But it's cool, man. It's like, uh, like. It made me feel like you're you're in like Star Trek: The Next Generation, and you're going beaming down to little places, and you've got your, you know, you've got your little ragtag gang. group. Yeah, you got your little ragtag group of people who offer you advice. You walk up to an NPC and you start talking about a quest, and then like one of the companions will just lean in and be like, "Oh, I'm not so I'm not so sure about this," and it has like no impact on the gameplay. But it's like you're just getting good advice from from a pal who's just yeah who's just there, and they've all got their own like each six of them have got their own dialogue that they'll say as you're walking around. Like you know, uh, I think it's her name's Nioka who just yeah. talked about like being drunk and stuff and then you know you'll have like a robot be like don't get drunk and stuff and they'll talk to each other too and that's just yeah, cool exactly. like hearing their interplay nice. the only, one weird nitpick if they're talking you can't open the map which is very frustrating i don't know if any of you guys noticed that if you try oh, to open yeah. the map when anybody's talking you just can't it's just so it's just such a weird thing but anyway it's cool because they'll talk to each other and then uh I, th I think my advice for people is when you go to a mission or when you go to a place like think about who would probably have the most interesting dialogue because uh like you said naoka since she's like a native to monarch if you bring her around it skips a lot of the like yeah oh who are you she'll be like oh that's that person so bringing her around like will help you with that planet if you mm -hmm. think like the religious guy you were talking about there's another religious camp and if you bring him in you learn more about him it's just um and sometimes they'll just like hey i don't think this is cool or whatever um yeah, there's a lot of cool things with the companions that I think because this game is smaller, and I think that's my thing for the whole game, because this game is, t it's still big. It's still going to take you like probably 20 to 30 hours to beat uh, more if you do everything um, and probably less, yeah. obviously, if you mainland it. But like just because it is like not 100 hours or 70 hours, they can make it so much deeper in a way that feels way more rewarding because since the world's smaller, the pacing's better and you're you're kind of always finding something like I was very scared that uh, you're going to be running. I just hate for first person games like this because yeah. it's like you're just walking forever and you're never really finding anything of a note because yeah. there's just this grand wasteland. Like here, it's like uh, if you walk for 30 seconds in any direction, you're going to find something, whether it's a camp, a cave, a mission, uh, a, another town. Um, it's And that really helped me get through this game because I, I was really struggling in the beginning and I was like, mm. oh, this is actually not a typical sort of open world game where it's just kind of boring for if you don't like the core of it yeah. and uh and then the writing really drew me in i i, I don't want to say 180 on this game but like i well i kind of did i hated it in the beginning no, and i, I absolutely it loved it by the end well, remember I, we spoke we spoke like when you first started playing it and you yeah. was like no i hate this i found it boring so what what do you think is like the bit that it clicked for you was there I a think like, bit getting getting more of the i think well in the beginning you just don't really have anything so it's just no. the combat is kind of boring it i still yeah. I don't think the con combat controls really well, but, and since you have nothing, you're like, oh, this, I just gotta shoot this guy in the face 20 times, and then uh, I have no abilities, and like, uh, the, you know, the companions aren't really super useful in the beginning, because you only have like one or two, but um, I think uh, 
just figuring out this wasn't as big as I thought it was going to be and like having actually like, oh, I don't have to wander for that long because I'm always, it's always got yeah. something to uh, string me along. Um, one, one thing I do think drags down the pacing and why I, <laughs> it would have been nice if we just waited like a year to play this game is that there are so many damn loading screens. It's very, very frustrating. And they're like 20 to 40 seconds. So it's like, okay, you got to go to your ship, uh, you know, you gotta load not, uh, into your the, ship. Yeah, I was going to say the loading times aren't as prominent yeah. on PS4 Pro, I don't think. Uh, well, I mean, you're still getting in there. I guess they're just shorter. Yeah, it's it's just all that kind of stuff. Um, it kind of, it's frustrating. We're like, ah, oh, this, I got to load into my ship and load out of my ship and then load to the town and then load out of the town. And then yeah. uh, sometimes there's like, uh, every every uh planet has like another like a couple other like loadable areas you know like i just wish it was in an elevator i don't know i, sure. I just there's a lot of yeah it's just one story but it's a really long elevator yeah. um yeah i just wish more of them had like um they cut down on that stuff but that, that was really my really technical problems like i think the story is great i think it's not um uh, it's morally more about side stuff but like I think the core story about like corporations and stuff is really well done. It's not as like edgy as you might think a like anti-capitalist yeah. sort of story would no, be. It's, it isn't. it's really funny. Like, like that game is funny. Like it's really dry. Yeah. Excuse me. So you can kind of read a lot of the choke and still get a lot out of it. And uh, yeah, I just found the humor really. Uh, uh, you had to pay attention to the humor, which I thought was great. And mm -hmm. uh, just the way they kind <laughs> yeah. of execute the story of these corporations and kind of build out that world from that like little nugget and. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, and like choices are great. Uh, there are like a lot of, like I said, a lot of like ones where you're not really like sure what, what to do uh, because they're just kind of both bad in the same sort of ways. And then they, you sometimes you can find a way to just mitigate that if completely if your skills are high enough in some areas. Um, yeah, and <laughs> even uh, so people have seen it in the trailers. There's a, and, and this is like the premise of the game. This guy like resurrects you out of this ship mm. that's been derelict. Um, you can turn that guy in almost immediately because he's a criminal. Yeah. Uh, and so I started doing that for my, I, I played for like a couple hours last night and went down that path. And it like, it, it takes you to the similar places, but it doesn't, you do different things. So yeah. you're still kind of going to the same planets. And it's just like, man, you could just totally sell this guy out and your <laughs> companions are, and that some of that stuff is pretty evil, but then they start bringing you in. Like, then you start seeing it from the corporation's point of view. And it's, it's not like, it's pretty compelling given that it's not like, as mustache twirling evil as i thought it was going to be but yeah yeah it's it's i can't believe they just let you just c totally sell this guy out like within this like second planet so would you it's would, one of the would you say yeah. it is perfect like you could play it twice like it definitely invites a second oh, totally. playthrough yeah yeah. Okay. yeah yeah oh i mean at least because if you think about like if you want to break the game down in two paths it's you know helping the scientist or helping the corporation yeah and uh, those are going to take you just to different places. So, and give you obviously different dialogue options and uh, just sort of show you. And I, I think the end is, uh, well, I th you go to the same place. Um, you just get there a different way. Yeah. But um, <laughs> also I got the joke ending, which I thought was funny. There's a trophy for it. Um, I, I won't spoil it. I'll tell you guys off, but it's Bro, okay. it, it made me laugh in a weird, in a way that came full circle. But uh yeah, it, there's definitely a bunch of different ways to play this game, and I, I, I want to play it on uh, hard at least. Maybe yeah. The, other oh, you're gonna do the this is survival mode as well. I, I might. I might try drinking that. Drinking in your water, and that that sounds sounds oh, did, uh, sounds, it sounds tense. New Vegas on that, I think. Oh, mm. did you? Yeah, I, I think that's totally yeah, yeah. why they did it. Also, yeah, because the game is very easy after you after the first few hours which are like moderately challenging <laughs> it gets pretty easy really I quickly it to be um, like really challenging to start look like, uh, uh, yeah it is i feel like i had the kind of the same same uh feelings as you at the very outset where it was like i'm all doing this wrong like yeah what, what like, is happening and then eventually it's like, oh okay i get it yeah that first combat encounter it was just like three dudes i, I died like a couple times um yeah just because you don't have much and then yeah so i've heard uh that if you hard is really hard at the beginning but it actually makes the combat more rewarding because there's all these systems that you don't have to engage with like you can slow when you slow down time because you can do that kind of uh pretty quickly the built uh, the bar fills up pretty easily yeah. but um, you can like blind them or cripple yeah, them yeah. or use them and like there is like no reason to engage with that uh outside uh, and they all have different weaknesses different ammo types there's no reason to engage with that if you're like normal because uh, I got this fucking sweet ass hammer and I slam it down and it literally one shots ninety percent of the enemies and it is like uh, you can get it on this on the first or the second yeah. planet technically so or the ship so uh, 
I'm just not having to engage with the combat as much, even though it is really freaking satisfying to kill stuff in like one hit. Like, I think the, the combat what wasn't the combat exceeded my expectations. I think for this kind of game, it wasn't anything like particularly spectacular, but I found it really satisfying. Yeah, and also like the companions initially, they start out feeling a little bit useless. But their companion abilities, when you start like, leveling up the perks and stuff, where like the cooldown will be uh, like faster and stuff like that, and you can keep dealing out the the uh, the companion abilities, um, that becomes really satisfying as well. And you're working like a little team. There is like when you get into one of the later planets, the the difficulty curve on one of the side missions that I did spiked really high. So mm -hmm. I kind of had that moment of anxiety where I was just like, oh no, have I like. Because the game was really easy up until that point. And I was thinking, yeah. have I Missed gone something. into this area and I'm the, the incorrect level for this area? Because this is ridiculous, like how difficult this one particular side quest was. So I like, oh no, I'm going to have to respect my character and everything. <laughs> so like, I invested a lot of um, points into combat and companions and stuff, thinking that it was going to... And then it just went easy again. <laughs> up, up, until, up, yeah. until the, up until like the very end, which is like, the most challenging part of the of the game. But it's never like never feels like too much i will say like you, you you said about like the story and stuff um i i did think that it could have done with a primary antagonist i know yeah, that there's just like, more of like a nebulous like yes the, the board's like a looming threat in the back yeah. background everybody's talking about it every npc talks about it the board is um it's a series of i think it's all the factions that are in the game uh are part of the board or they're at least subservient to the board um, and the board basically controls all of the Halcyon star system that you're in. Um, the board, like, obviously is in control of everything, but there's not a like, there, there's not like a one individual who's made immediately apparent to you. There is like a leader, Chairman Rockwell, who you don't even is, like really see him till like, no, the end. until the end. Um, you know, it's very much the final third of the game when he suddenly appears, and there's another person as well who's gone like a secondary antagonist and then you kind of but you don't feel you feel compelled to well depending on how you play i guess either fight for or against the board um but there's no like real person driving that it's just all hearsay and i guess that is a way that it could like could be you know with it being so like shady they don't particularly want to put somebody on a pedestal about it they just want to control things from the background and stuff but it just it does feel like i never felt like a drive playing um as like i guess a hero both times i never felt like oh i've got to topple this this person yeah like, i've got to topple this mega corporation which is fine like completely fine way of handling it but i didn't feel compelled to get any particular person even the people who were intentionally intended to be villainous um I, I didn't feel like they were like great villains i guess uh yeah it's just i could see that the threat the threat of the board um I, I, yeah. I think it's i i do kind of i agree i agree with you in a sense where like yeah it would have been nice to have maybe have one figurehead but i was okay with it kind of being this like ominous like shitty uh, overlords thing but um i don't know i feel like we should ask jason some about it too because you, did you beat it jason i have not i had okay. to kind of split off and work on a okay. game that must not a game, be named. Yeah, must not be named. Oh, okay. So, it, <laughs> what do you what do you what do you it, think about good. it? It's good. It's good. I probably uh, I, I think I was probably at the third third of the way point. I was on Monarch. Okay. Uh, when I kind of left off, um, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's what everyone wanted Fallout to to be yeah. for like the last few Fallout <laughs> entries. Yeah. Um, but I agree with Paul. I think it's like. A little bit too much, you know, of, of a Fallout clone. Um, mm. I really hope to, uh, if there's an Outer Worlds to see it kind of have its branch own out. design direction and, you know, branch out into, uh, I mean, the writing style was great. Love the dry humor. Yeah. But like Paul said, it's like, why is, why is it the space 50s here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah Especially that because. It takes place uh, in like the 2400s or something, right? Like yeah. you would, you would think that each corporation, because they each have a specialty, would have their own design language. Like you would think, Spacer's Choice would be just like, you know, ramshackle, like bare minimum, you know, uh, shanties. But then, like the other ones, you know, the more the more upscale brands maybe have, you know, nicer places. But mm. they all kind of have the same aesthetic. 
regardless of what their primary function is, which was kind of weird. Um, but whatever. Uh, I know. Didn't they fund this on Fig or something? This was Did a. Oh. I don't remember. Did that? Wasn't this game? When this game? Um. I mean, that's supremely impressive if this was crowdfunded because it feels like it had a lot of money pulled into it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It was is. it? Wow. Oh no, <laughs> no, we're getting mixed no, up. Thinking, outer Wild. Thinking the Outer Wild. Oh, it's the Outer Wild. Yeah, I was like, I think we're thinking out of the Outer Wild. Oh, yeah. those games, it's so unfortunate. I will say with the with them having like a different <laughs> aesthetic, so it like a little bit like well, just the board really has its own thing as you as you get later on. That has its own aesthetic, like that small bit out there. Though I will agree that it's like all of them. Aside from like one in Monarch, that's like the lowest of the low in terms of the factions. They all do share uh, the the same the same look. I did just think like, why are they just so many shanty towns here? But they have <laughs> not they have not done a good job of colonizing these these yeah. communities. Which I, I think that's the point though, because this corporation doesn't doesn't give a shit really about the people it has. They're like literally property, so like they put them in these really shitty houses so they can. You know, build up. I think that actually makes sense in the story if you think about but the they, rich area. But they was they they it was fine from what I it, it, I, I can't remember what bits of spoilers because there's so many deviating paths. Yeah, it's almost but hard to Earth, spoil. Earth Earth sends the colonies out. Uh, so Earth got a control of it, and then the board eventually takes over. But this colonization process it doesn't start out unsuccessfully. Like when they colonize these planets, like it's a successful venture. And from what I can gather, like it's it's a few centuries. Like you haven't, you're not just joining this new colony. Like it's it's been there for a while. So you would think even if there are shanty towns available, that you know they would have been moved into those because some of them like there's like a plague on Terra too. That's like a big thing. The plague has wiped mm -hmm. out this community. You would think that the at least be remnants of a better society that they tried to build um because they colonized quite a few places but like the best looking places in the game are the gatekeeper which is a fucking ship and then um groundbreaker, the groundbreaker sorry not the gatekeeper <laughs> <laughs> the groundbreaker which is the ship and then one of the one of the later planets those aren't spoilers they happen immediately the groundbreaker yeah. is and more yeah. or less immediate uh, yeah, that's like a really good looking place, and you can tell a lot that that's kind. Of, it wants you to be like, oh, because like the doors open, and you're like, oh, it's, yeah, it's, like a, it's really nice opening vista. Yeah, it thing. is, and then you don't really, you don't really get that at the start. When I landed, I thought because all the pastel colours and stuff, I was like, oh no, it looks like No Man's Sky. I, don't, I can't, I don't, I, I hate that colour scheme. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, it looks like it, but uh, it. The planets look really nice, and the sky boxes are like gorgeous. Like yeah. go, navigating on your, going to like your ship's navigational system, and being like, I'll go to this planet, and it's the planet that's next to a ringed planet. And then you look up, and then there's just a like, ring this giant yeah. ring planet. There. I was like, that's a that's a good stuff. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Also, wanna, I want to say real quick, I I don't really like RPGs. I don't get into like I've tried Fallout for. Oh, I know. I've tried Fallout, I've tried Skyrim, I just, I can't, they bore the shit out of me. So I think it says a lot that I was able to love this game. Um, and it also kind of says that I wouldn't maybe have as much um, reservations as maybe you two have, where like, oh, it's a little too Fallout-y, because I don't really have that yeah. basis to start yeah. from. So just want to put my perspective on what yeah. I liked about it. No, I think it's a game for people like, people like yourself who would be interested in the game, but haven't necessarily played a lot of Fallout games, but it's particularly for people who are, very much into the Fallout games and have been disappointed by what has recently been been offered good. there. So, so it's a good ass game. It's a it good gets a thumbs game. up from us. Uh, Paul, you spoke about Battle for Neighborville, uh, Plants vs Zombies. You spoke about it a lot All last right. week. Um, yeah, but now you've put a score on it. So, do you do you want some final thoughts on, yeah. on the game? Yeah, so I feel like this is just got, it's going to go in a blink of an eye, isn't it? A bit this. I have seen a lot of people actually liking the new planets for oh. pla uh, planets versus zombies, plants for <laughs> planets again. Plants uh, versus plants apes. Versus <laughs> yeah, I've seen like a lot of people liking it, but I've realised that like a lot of those are on PS4. I'm wondering whether there's kind of a different community. Would you play it PC? PC, and I mean, I shouldn't imagine there'd be more performance issues on PC than there were PS4, but I, I did know, go yeah. onto the forums afterwards, and there were a lot of people complaining specifically with PC players. There's a lot of performance issues with the game. There's a lot of stuttering, uh, which is really bad when it's a PvP. Uh, oh, really? Wow. Mostly PvP. I mean, just movement <laughs> stutters it to a halt. 
um, you know, aiming's really imprecise and there's a lot of server side issues as well. Uh, PvP is really unbalanced, uh, which is a shame. I think Plants vs. Zombies is a really underrated series. Uh, and I was really looking forward to Battle for Neighbourville, even though it had like a really weird launch where it actually launched six weeks ahead of its proper launch. Yeah. So I was looking forward to it. But weirdly, the PvE is the best bit of that game. And even then, that's just kind of casually enjoyable. Um, I think with a few patches, the PvP could be a lot of fun. But I just think it's not really, unless you're like, you know, heavily into that series. Or apparently playing on console where it's better. Um, and it's yeah. not free to play. We should it's not reiterate free that, right? Play, yeah. yeah, it's unless you've got Origin Premier, which I have. I think I think it's I think it's free on that. But a lot of oh. EA games are. But it's just fine. So. I wonder if it'll be better if like EA would stick with it, or you never know. Because I... I've got I've got to be honest. I might get it on AI Access because I think it's free on AI Access, and I actually yeah. read a lot of Plants vs Zombies games, and apparently. Mm. It's just all right on PS4, so I might just get it on that and give it a give it a spin. In all of this downtime we have now, <laughs> we'll give yeah. it a spin instead of Death Stranding. Put that shit on instead. Yeah. After party is next week. Uh, yeah. Jason, are you able to tell me what you've been playing at all? Uh, you've mentioned I'm the not, Outer Worlds, not the main but, game. Uh, no. Um, so I'm gonna talk about something way more boring. <laughs> um, <laughs> I got a uh, I got a, a Neo ST, which is a flash cart for the Neo Geo AES. Oh my! Um, so I've been playing some some Metal Slug on real hardware. I'm, I'm sorry, is that like hardware? Is it like a Game Boy kind of? Yeah, thing? it's uh, okay. like the, the the Neo Geo AES. It's it's basically the arcade arcade hardware, but like in a slightly different, more consumer friendly format. Um, so uh, games where it run like a thousand dollars on the low end Jeez. right now so oh. i I've, I've had i've had the console for a while but i've only had one game uh which samurai showdown because that's Did you pay a thousand dollars for it no no <laughs> two thousand no. dollars markup yeah um uh, I wait should, is, I should... is it neo sd is that was called yeah that's the flash oh. cart for it um this, this because I, I just yeah that <laughs> okay uh, um Weird. and i just uh i'm not paying a thousand dollars to, no. to play metal slug so no. i got i got the i've been wanting to get that for a while the so i would actually be able to use my, my neo geo aes uh for something other than samurai showdown so um yeah just kind of been playing metal slug which is cool it's like you know identical to the arcade experience um in the the neo sd lets you switch it over to mbs mode which is 100 percent identical to the, the arcade experience and you can like you know give yourself 99 99 lives and mm -hmm. infinite continues and turn the blood on and all that cool stuff so uh i don't have the patience to actually play metal slug in arcade so this is cool because i really like uh the artwork and you know the, the yeah. run and gun gameplay yeah, but I, I don't like the actual frustration that comes with playing them because they're ridiculously hard um so yeah, it's been pretty cool. I went through uh, three and four, played them, just straight shot them. It was a lot of fun, um, and just just kind of checking out some of the Neo Geo classics that I normally wouldn't get to play at home. I mean, I could with emulation, but I'm I'm at the point in my life. I'm at 31. You know, I'm snooty, and I yeah I want to play on actual hardware because not, I'm, a, not an illegal. I've got to make my life hard. Yeah, so yeah. they had uh, in in Krakow they had um, an arcade machine that that had I can't remember which metal slug it was in, but it was it was one of the arcade metal slugs. But you could just pay like ten. I don't think it's euro. It might be euro in Krakow. Ten, ten, whatever their money is, ten of their <laughs> money, and uh, and just play it for like an infinite period of time all day. And it yeah, was, that's that's a perfect arcade game. That is. We have a couple arcades like that, but. I just nothing beats sitting on your couch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, hell not yeah, sitting on uh, your couch. Yeah, but uh, yeah, uh, I'm glad I got it because, as I said, like if you look at eBay, like some of those AES cartridge prices are ridiculous. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I've never that's got what I've been doing. Play. I've never got into collecting purely for uh, that reason, and also because where do you put it? Where do you put the things? <laughs> 
I mean... <laughs> He's I, I, turned the camera. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like a mountain of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Jason, live a, a hellish not existence not where you can yeah. walk around your apartment. Jason's yeah. not sitting on a chair. No, it's just a pile of... Yeah, it's just a bunch of... It's a bunch of seedy eyes <laughs> that I've screwed a seat back <laughs> into. A cartridge to one. Michael, uh, you're, Michael, you're Overwatch. Yeah. Overwatch yeah. Overwatch boy. So between little bouts of uh, Outer Worlds, I was just kind of dumping myself back in Overwatch on the switch um which uh i mean we kind of had that that leak that came out and it's like hey it's gonna be out in a couple months or whatever from the nintendo direct a few months ago so yeah it's kind of the same as uh it's always been it, it looks actually pretty remarkably nice on the switch um i played 200 hours of the uh, one on ps4 so i feel like i know the game relatively well you played a lot of it too paul um mm -hmm. so you would also uh, i don't know if you've downloaded your copy yet but no haven't. it's uh at first, I was really in love with it because I was like, "Man, like I haven't, I haven't really been playing Overwatch for the last few months. Just kind of like fell off uh, yeah. in a way because Crash Team Racing and kind of Mortal Kombat kind of took my time that I would invest into Overwatch. But um, so I, I was like, "Oh man, this is really fun to get back in." And immediately when you get get in the game, uh, the gyro controls are at like not literally full blast, but it's just like you like move and your character just swings in the other it direction defaulted then to, to oh draw it, well it's defaulted to both so uh. just by naturally of you being a human and you moving yes. it's gonna just be doing this the whole time so i turned that way down like almost completely off and i was like well this is like this version's like um unique thing is these are these controls so i i tried to i tried i really did try to get those controls down and they're just they're not no. they're not really good because and it I should also say there are a ton of different ways to customize the gyro. You can have it shut off when you have the stick. You can make it like obviously the sensitivity. You can yeah. uh, change it a bunch of different ways, like change how sensitive each different tilting. Like when you do this, uh, when you tilt it, and then when you like drive it like a steering wheel, there's three different ways that the motion controls work. And none of them really seem to be accurate because there's like, there's like a tiny input delay from tilting it and uh, it actually moving. So uh it's just almost impossible to get a beat on somebody because everyone in overwatch moves pretty quickly so unless you're shooting a roadhog like or a diva or something you're probably gonna miss because oh god and especially like tracer and genji they're yeah. basically impossible even with the stick um so I, I i eventually turned off the motion controls because i you know i'm obviously like i said i'm a human so i'm moving a little bit when i'm playing and even just that little bit kind of is frustrating to always have that like specter of of inaccuracy so I just don't think those controls are good, and I haven't on I haven't played Splatoon or anything like that. The Nintendo set that apparently uses that stuff really well. Yeah, but I don't um, whether it uses it well, it's just people are absolutely insanely good with with yeah. it. Yeah, and like I'm I said, like a, Splatoon players will come into Overwatch and yeah, then just tear everybody, everybody up. up. Yeah, I mean maybe I think it would have been uh, I I don't know I because I want to see if that input lag is there 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 in um, Splatoon because I just be like okay move it and then it moves like you know couple like later than you think it should so you it i mean you can't like be predict unless you can be like predictive in a way that's just like not fun yeah. um so maybe there's this contingency of people that can uh, uh, acclimate but i just i just found it to be a real bother the only thing that i did is i leave it on for bastion because when you go into turret mode you just go like this and it's like actually pretty fun because you don't need to be like that accurate you don't need to be pinpoint accurate and you don't have to worry about moving with no. the less stick so you're just literally rotating so i was doing really well as bastion i was like this is kind of cool but this is like one subsection of one of the you know 30 what one heroes right now so it's not like anyone else really benefits from that i don't um, think i've ever heard anything as off-putting as i was really good at bastion <laughs> that, that is bastion, that's the bastion is not of annoying too, anymore man. like he was when the game launched yeah and that's not, because there's like 40 shields per hero now yeah it's oh uh, uh, it's it's absolute madness yeah, i'll, I'll it, drive back into it on pc again because because i didn't download it on switch for whatever reason uh, yeah. and wow just the shields it's just like oh Look the barriers you're talking about, right? now, yeah, look, yeah, because so everyone was playing Sigma and then everyone plays Orisa, <sighs> and it's just like you gotta kill. And then by the time one of those barriers dies, the other barrier. Uh, yeah, I think whatever if they do next hero, which the rumors are not gonna do in this this uh, year, um, they need to do another barrier buster because you kind of got Symmetra and Bastion, where everyone else and Moira is ultimate, but everyone else kind of has to like play nice. And I guess Doomfist can go through those shields too, but like, um, it's just like there's so few heroes that can shield bust, like, mm. um. 
they need to um it'd be kind of cool if they had a tank that could take the shields or take some part i was of the just shield. gonna say I like a more a more a, like a, a a character with a lot more health who can get through those shields because you're you're instead just hoping for a really competent player to be able to get yeah, through them, yeah. which you don't get with overwatch all the time like when yeah. you're solo or whatever but like we were saying like when bastion was annoying when it launched but that's what's cool about this game it's launching in this like really fully featured state where it's got like roll queue and you know hero limits and all this stuff that mm. console because it is the same game there's like really nothing mm. missing um like i said it looks really good too but um i think my problem and the, even though i love this game and i did i did really like playing it just like chilling on my bed just like it's like a really fun game to just kind of have with you but then it's like then you start kind of breaking down like well why do why, why would i get this it's like well it runs at 60 frames at least on the other systems and because this runs at 30 so there's obviously like a little bit of downgrade there which is not as not going to be as responsive and smooth and the frame rate will dip sometimes when like ultimates are ha like if if there are probably like four or five people using ultimates the frame rate will kind of go to the mid 20s it's right, noticeable okay. it's not like ultimate ultimate catastrophically Destroys yeah. your destroys your bloody frame rate as well. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. The ultimates are destroying uh, the frame Switch rate. So, over. yeah. So it's 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 like okay. So the frame rate's not as good even at the default, and then it will dip below that, and then it's like, well, the analog sticks in this thing. Uh, I don't even think the pro controller is that great, but whatever. The analog sticks on this thing aren't as accurate anyway. The gyro step isn't good. So it's like there's not. You must really want to have a portable Overwatch that. But it's not portable. It really isn't that portable because you have yeah. to have Wi-Fi. So yeah. um, it's if you want to be able to take over Overwatch to somebody else's house sometimes and use yeah. their Wi-Fi to play, or sit in a cafe and play yeah. it with their and then we'd stop inviting you because you're like, why are you bringing your console to my house? You should talk to me and then play, <laughs> play with me or something. Like it's just this really weird. Yeah. Uh, I I don't hate the game exists uh, obviously, but it's just all the when I started the more I played it, the more it kind of like, oh, this is Overwatch again. I was like, oh, this is actually a lot of I don't really, I don't want to say, I don't understand why, but like, I don't know. It's just this, there's no real huge selling factor. And I, okay. So the biggest thing, uh, you, you Paul are probably going to say the same thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, you probably have a ton of costumes and stuff on your PC yeah. or, or wherever you play yeah. and you, there's no cross progression. So, you know, I've got a ton of stuff on my console and I, it's, you, when you play a game for the song, you get really attached to all that stuff because you're like, oh, I played during the Halloween event, I got the Cthulhu Zenyatta skin, and then, you know, this is Halloween. This is launched when the Halloween event did, and you're like, I don't have any of that stuff now. I got to start with default skins. Like, it, the, it's just very frustrating to have to start over and have there no, be no cross uh, progression because it's like, if they, they should have maybe positioned it as like, hey, if you already have it, this is like, uh, you can keep doing your progress. Yeah, for can, yeah, 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 exactly. I was Cause thinking, because uh, if there's no, hold on, one yeah, second. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me finish this slide. Since there's no cross progression, you're you're not selling it as a companion piece. You're just selling it as a separate thing that's inferior that doesn't really get to help mm, you with your yeah. other game. So it's it's very frustrating. They've talked about like how hard cross play and cross uh, progression is, and it's like I understand that, and I, I'm not saying they could just flip the button and then you know have yeah. it go on everything. Even though they, it probably is more of a Sony or like microsoft or nintendo thing um it's just the the way that not having cross progression works it positions it in a way that i don't think benefits it because it should be a companion piece not the separate thing where you have to start over because why would you if you're a switch player why would you just want to play this like it's just a small subsection of people i think it's selling to so what were you saying Mac? i was just thinking like it wouldn't even have to be i mean it'd be ideal if it was cross progression and you could yeah. like move from one to the other but like even if it was like a really janky uh, way of doing it where like, it, like Destiny 2, the progression there, it was quite a, a weird way to uh, apply to get your save move across and stuff like that. It took a while for me to actually get it done. Like if it was just a way for them to look at your account one time and then like unlock those on the Switch, like yeah, it, you wouldn't exactly. have to have that cross progression. It would just be that one time thing where uh, you'd get your current unlocks. Like just something, anything, you know? Yeah, something. Yeah, and the thing is too is, okay, I'm not like obviously... I don't know the technicals behind this, obviously, no, yeah, but yeah. Um, <laughs> thanks, Mac, for reassuring me. No, I don't uh, either. That's what I mean. Either. I'm just yeah, like, do it, do it. What are you doing? <laughs> no, because if you look at the BlizzCon stuff, if you just enter that, or even like the pre-order stuff, or I, uh, something like that. Anyway, the BlizzCon stuff, if you buy a ticket, you get the skins, and you have gotten them every year since it's been mm. a game. 
they unlock on every platform. So if you have Overwatch on the PC, you're going to have that uh, Winston skin or Bastion skin. Um, and it'll be on your consoles. So it's like there is some way for it to tell yeah. uh, your different accounts what you have. So it'd be cool if like you log in your Blizzard account and it kind of checks and then it kind of transfers it. And then it could kind of keep your Blizzard account as like this cloud save or it could beam everything back and forth. I think even just that would help this out because just by having it, it would position it as a kind of a different product because like i said it's just it's like a fraction of a fraction of people yeah. who it's selling to again not a bad game i still had a blast it's still fun but uh i think with the control issues and with the kind of like lack of it kind of connectivity it's just kind of like eh. and especially i mean this didn't factor into my review but if these overwatch 2 rumors are true and it ends up being like a new thing um it's kind of it's kind of weird just to push this game out there like that um to sort of yeah for sure uh, not to die but like oh here's uh, yeah we're, we're not gonna well, play over, hero in. overwatch 2 has like uh, apparently it's pve isn't it that's the i think it's the, yeah. yeah there's been no pvp like rumors around it rumor. which... a pve game would have worked really well on the switch <laughs> yeah like yeah. it's just yeah, I look at this or something. Like, what's the point? I, I don't understand the point of the Switch version. I know there are people who yeah. haven't played Overwatch who will be picking it up on the Switch, but I can't imagine that anybody's going to be looking at it and thinking, "Oh, this is going to stay with me for for a, for a while." It's just it's a it's a weird one. Multiplayer focus games are weird. I remember the same with Rocket League. There isn't like cross progression on yeah. Rocket League at all. So it's, it's like I guess I'm, yeah, and it's fine, but it's like well, I've got better versions elsewhere. And yeah. And this is literally just like a spin-off of, of yeah. that, like because nothing carries over. That and that's my and like it being a new Switch owner, like relatively new. That's been my whole thing with the Switch. It's like everyone, I've always seen from the outside, everyone wants all these ports. And then I got the thing, and I'm like, you know, I got two ports of games I play a lot, like Mortal Kombat and uh, uh, Overwatch. And it's like, <laughs> I just find myself kind of complaining. Like uh, the core gameplay is obviously really good, but it's like, well, I'd have none of my stuff, and it's like a way worse version of that game. Yeah. Like it looks a lot worse, it runs a lot worse, more expensive. And it, yeah, it's more expensive. Like it's just like I don't. <laughs> maybe this is blasphemous to say, but I don't really see like a lot of the point to a lot of these Switch ports. Also, we should say Outer Worlds is coming to the Switch. I don't know if they've put it. I don't think they put a date on it yet. But like, you know, I. How is that going to run? You know what I mean? Like, are mm. people really going to? Because it's probably going to be a longer load time. It's going to look way worse. It might run like garbage. Like, we don't know. Which your three um, runs well now. Mm -hmm. Anything can happen. The possibilities yeah. are endless. But like, the that's Switch. another example. That game sold millions of copies. Like, who? Now I will like who single, wants? single player games coming out on the Switch. Like, even if there are worse ports, like I think a lot of people will put up with it just because of the portability. If I yeah. had to commute going out in the morning. Yeah. I'd pick up the Outer Worlds. If I had to physically leave this cave yeah. that I've set for myself, <laughs> then, yeah. I'll, I, you know, I'd get the Outer Worlds on Switch. I'd be like, well, I loved it on the PS4. I'm going to take it on the bus. Yeah. Um, but then even then you got to start over. So you're like third play. Uh, play yeah. Play. It's sure. just a lot of this. But a uh, wide for internet multiplayer focus games, I don't really yeah. understand. Uh, yeah. And like, yeah. you can't even play Overwatch with an internet. You can't even like go in and like look at your cosmetics or something. No, so it's exactly. Just, it's, just... it's a lot of, it's a lot of weird stuff with this game. Again, like it, but that's just, I've said my piece. I'm just imagining Grim. playing Overwatch on the train and just going into a tunnel. And then into the, yeah. Oh, well, that's yeah. that. Yeah. It was also funny because while I was playing it and I played my PS4 version, just kind of like get in my brain. I was like, oh, this is way better in like every yes. conceivable way. Yeah. And like, it kind of just made me, if anything, this game kind of got me to play regular Overwatch again. So yeah, I'll probably play it. And then when my Nintendo Switch Online stuff runs out, I'll be like, fine so yeah alrighty so that's what we've been playing we've got a few bits of news to talk about quickly um there may be a new batman game called batman arkham uh -huh. legacy so um <laughs> are you ready for a new arkham are we all ready i haven't uh, played the other ones i haven't yeah, either really. I don't really? Yeah. I own them on like three different platforms. I do as well. Yeah, yeah me too. Them. Oh no, Jason wasn't <laughs> yeah. a surprise in no Batman boy, but I'm surprised by you, Mac. I yeah. imagine you to be, uh, yeah. be a strong. Batman I've got them boy. installed, so that's yeah, the first say, step, isn't it? Super cheap. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, they just roll them free on Epic, right? All like three of them. Or four of them? I, I thought remember. they did, but I've just got the Lego ones. Oh, but I've got them on Steam anyway. I don't know what happened to my yeah. account. Um, they're yeah, worth, I have. They're definitely yeah. worth it. Asylum's the best one. City's the second best mm -hmm. one. 
Everybody pretended that Knight was good, but it ends. Uh, oh. Origin, Origin, uh, Origins is better than Knight. Well, anyway, uh, no, there's apparently... Yeah, wait, wait, wait. wait. That's, that's, that's objectively true. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man. Well, there's going to be a new Arkham game story. for you to argue yeah, over. We're, we're debating these. Prove <laughs> <laughs> right me wrong. Information from uh, uh, Sabi, who has uh, gained yeah. notoriety for the E3 2019 leaks, and apparently Nintendo's lawyers uh, contacted them to stop leaking, stop leaking things. So they have some credibility. <laughs> Sabi, come on. And um, it's supposedly Arkham Legacy, and it will have the Bat family as playable. Um, We've seen in the is past it, like wait, DLCs. Is this, this isn't the what's it called one? Is it? Is it? Court it's not. Owls. I didn't look into this. Yeah, this isn't the Court of Owls one. Or is this completely different? This is no, just the same court, rumor. This seems like Court of Owls isn't happening. And it's instead this. Right. Court yeah. of Owls was. For, I think so because Court of Owls was just Court of Owls was like a rumor that never came to fruition. Like several times, wasn't it? I think. Hmm. I okay. think so. I don't think that. I'm saying this. I'm saying this like it's truth. I don't know. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, because I was gonna say like these Batman rumors have been like, oh, it's Court of Owls. Mm. Yeah, it's Damian Wayne. It's like all these different. Uh, it's it's just all these different if rumors. If it's what? if it's Damian Wayne, it could tie into the whole Bat Family thing. Yeah, just, exactly. Well, I think that game would doing like it. Arkham's, um, like the way that it handles like all of the uh, Bat Family. Like so far, what like Robin's like Goth Robin. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like, this is going to be the most gothic family. There is going to be no levity in this family mm, at yeah. all. Everybody's that going to be super like, serious. No, not, not, it, yeah, this series has like some levity with like Catwoman and stuff, but those, those games are really... No, not really the Bat crazy. family, though. Like yeah, Robin's, not the Bat family. Robin's like wearing a hoodie and stuff. It's like, Robin, come they on. Might have, they might have the Lego Robin. From, uh, yeah, from the, the Lego <laughs> Robin. Yeah, with yeah. his uh, green pants. Oh, yeah, uh, definitely yeah. need it. That's a movie. Need. But yeah, apparently... Yeah, so what's the rumor? It will feature all... Uh, all the characters available from the start. This is of the Bat family. Uh, they don't go into specifics. Um, and that's mainly it. It's supposed to be called yeah. Legacy. And it's supposed to feature the Bat family who are playable want, from the beginning as opposed to DLC, which is like flashbacks and stuff. So I want to say that if it's featuring all the Bat family, I want it to have a thing where it's like GTA 5's wheel system where you can choose oh. a character and then right. go into each one. And it's just like Nightwing is Trevor, just like sitting somewhere with just like, you know, just in his pants, <laughs> like with, be with beer just all down him. That's what I want. Do it, you cowards. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, um, I don't know. I, I, I did. I sorry again for asking, but is it is this like the WB Montreal thing, or is yes. this the WB? Oh, so so that's what Rocksteady. they've been. Okay, so so people are waiting now because they've been teasing things. Uh, you know, symbols on Twitter and Instagram, I believe. Yeah, for like months, it's been ridiculous. So, <laughs> they've been. I feel like there's been a new Batman rumor for every month for like years. But what? So if this is WB, so. Rocksteady still has the license. The Rocksteady can still use the license, can't they? They're not locked out from using the license. Is that right? I think so, well, there's, they're, I yeah, I think so. I don't know. So, so this could because WB WB Montreal was just um, they did our origins, didn't they? So this could yeah. just be oh, so this, so it could be Court of Owls. So Rocksteady, I think ah, this is what yeah. you're saying, isn't it? Is, Rocksteady yeah. could be the Court of Owls one. Yeah, well, I thought it would. I thought it was going to be the uh, flipped, but there's like rumors of Rock City's game being more of a like make your own superhero kind of game, but. Or maybe um, it's Superman. <laughs> no, dude, I don't think they cracked that out. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, this, I don't know. It, I didn't really think uh, Origins was that good. I, I don't know. I know. I, I don't think it was that was good. Better. Story was no. better than Knights. Story was better. Story, story was fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. I, th I liked the, the twist or whatever you can say, but um, it was in the trailer, so whatever. But uh, yeah, I, I think that game just felt little off and the, their next game i don't know if you guys remember but origins had like a post credit scene with like deathstroke kind of implying that the suicide squad game is coming and then that game got canned so they've kind of been you know they've been working on well uh, origins was 2013 so yeah. that was six years ago um so they've been they haven't made a game like a, they haven't completed a game in a long time they did some of the dlc for arkham knight but other than that they haven't really uh Origins, really Origins to me played out like a game that could have been one of the better Arkham games if it had a lot more time in the oven. There was yeah, like a lot of that, stuff that was wrong with that. And the game. PC version was broken, and like yeah, it kind of sucks because it on PC. It there was like one mission. I got stuck in a clock tower. Like it just broke my game, and I had <laughs> yeah. to restart again. 
Debbie I, I did, sort wait, of like... I got stuck there as well and I just never played. I literally <laughs> just played Origins, nothing before yeah, it. Is. And then that what, was my the first Riddler experience. Trophy. Was it with the Riddler trophy in there? I, I think so. Like, I, just, got I was like, in the same place. I was like, what on earth? You. Never play again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. It is weird how WB sort of like has bastardized Origins, where it's like it's not in the Arkham collection on the consoles. It's not, it wasn't in that free bundle on, on Epic. Like, mm. they, they haven't remastered it at all. They put it out yeah. uh, after the PS3. Or, or ps4 came out i think on ps3 yeah so it's just weird that this i hope what i guess what i'm getting to is i hope the studio is able to sort of come into their own and sort of make a mm. game that like people legitimately really like without the specter of of rock steady kind of hanging over yeah. them um who knows if they can if they've already got a game canned and already have made one of the least popular arkham games but um i i don't know i it, it kind of gives me hesitancy but i'm also uh hopeful that they do kind of come into their own yeah. In PS5 news, uh, we've potentially got to look at what it's going to look like. Um, this is... It's a dev kit, though. Right, exactly, yeah. There's actually a tweet from a developer. Uh, this de this uh, tweet has now been deleted. Um, but it's a photo <laughs> that lines up with the uh, the designs from... It's Let's Go Digital, who do like mock-ups of yeah. rumors and stuff like that. And I don't know if you've all got the image up, but it is... Mm -hmm. uh, on YouTube, I'll actually have it pop up for you. I'll make sure it's in there. It looks like what the Empire would play video <laughs> games on. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's grown on me. I will say that. What? Like, I it's grown on me a bit. Right you know, like a light you know, I don't know. Maybe, I think it's the color scheme that really makes it not great. Um, like, yeah. but so, like, yeah. if it was just all black and the cooling, like there was a reason for these vents and it was actually cooling. gonna, yeah, well, my PS4, Oh my word! I'd yeah, much rather it was three times Mark, as tall. Mark, Michael's PS4. <laughs> Mine is the loudest. Stream. It's like a Dude. it's like a commentary above oh, it. Oh my word! <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I actually opened it up. Took. I think I said this. Took all the dust out. Did the thermal paste again, and it did not work at all. So I'm oh, really? so angry. But um, is thermal paste did your PS4? Did you customize it? What was the thermal second? paste going for? I just I just put a thermal paste on it. Nothing nothing crazy. But um, mm -hmm. also what Mac is saying with the the PS5 dev kit, it's most likely a dev kit because it's ugly as hell. Oh yeah. So everyone has seen it. And it, if you Google PS4 dev kit, it also it just looks like a toaster oven. Like yeah, it no, looks it it's completely matter. unappealing. So these aren't supposed to be sexy. These nah. are just supposed to be the guts in yeah. uh, something that is just kind of for developers. And then they give us the sexy version because let's yeah. be honest. If they made a V, or you know, it's like the because it, it's kind of V-shaped, which uh, PS5, but like, um, it's it's gonna be a square, a rectangle, and maybe they'll yeah. double up and do another parallelogram. But like, it's not gonna, it's it's not gonna be. I don't think anything crazy. Like, yeah, we've all been used to this form factor, and I think a lot of that is, you know, uh, part of the appeal. Because when they first, because when they first unveil it, which is probably I'm guessing gonna be in February, again, um, it's. If they bring it out and it's just like this ugly ass V thing, then people aren't gonna give a crap what the loading stuff is or whatever they no, bring out. They're just gonna be like, "Oh, that thing looks like no, this you is know, a, uh, Empire play video games on." No, I, I think this is a fallacy. Does anybody does anybody care what the consoles look like aside from convincing themselves that we do care before they come? Every time, no, yeah, do. but. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I don't know that because it just sits on your on your chat log. If it was disaster, monstrously ugly, I can understand. But if it's like passably, I don't think the PS4 looks great. It looks like a cake. It doesn't look and good. Like, no, <laughs> and the, the original good. Xbox One that didn't look great. The X looks good, but the Xbox One original didn't look fantastic. It's just like, the it's, Xbox One is huge. Like shit. <laughs> I thought yeah. the 360 looked In terrible. Hell, maybe. Yeah, maybe. and like the be the best console ever, the GameCube. That looks terrible. It's a it's a handbag. I don't uh, think they always so make. Looks good to you then. They always make the the original one horrible, and then there'll be like a slim one, you know. Like that's when it's, yeah. they start to, and you get your limited editions, and you know. Yeah. And the limited editions are the worst looking ones. I had a Gears of War Xbox One S that screamed like one of the locusts whenever you turned it on, <laughs> and it was a, it was terrible. It was just whenever you turned Wait, it on. Wait, really? Yeah, like I got, oh, I got, I didn't buy it. I got sent it through, oh. and then every time I went to use it, I was like, "You just embarrassed to have people," because I got like my nice setup, everything's in like black and white, and then just like a blood splattered Xbox One S that like has a fit when you turn it on, and that's people paid more money for the Xbox that screamed at you. And I was like, oh, no, but yeah, I yeah. Like thanks for the thing. gift, though, Microsoft. Cheers, yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. 
but uh, yeah. So not, yeah, it's looking sorry. a little, it's looking a little uh, ugly, isn't it? It's, you know, if if the actual retail version looks like that, then uh, I don't know. I think people might be a little bit put put, put off unless the Xbox is even uglier. It's just a big X. No yeah. <laughs> yeah, they've just yeah. got we yeah. have X and the V. Yeah. That's, what that's, what that's, do we all, that's old like that's old like uh, uh, like magazine, my cup you know the magazines. It's like this is what the Xbox One's gonna look like and it's just a big X tower or something. Man, there's that's actually cool. there's actually a PC case that is an X. I wanna I wanna say it's like by I've seen that. Yeah. Oh that's cool. I was just thinking, maybe it will be. Um mm. but we do have <laughs> the last the last but not least, or maybe least, a uh, bit of news we've got. Fallout seventy six. Yeah, that that one is getting a, a tw well a membership a subscription, and Why? it brings private worlds, scrap boxes, whatever that is, and more. And the main thing here is that the twelve month membership is a hundred dollars. Hundo, hundred dollars. Charlton Heston just at the end of Planet of the Apes, like they, they <laughs> find them. <laughs> Damn, so, yeah. so they're asking players. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're asking players for either thirteen dollars a month or a hundred dollars a year, and uh, membership Insane. benefits of Fallout first. I didn't think it was just going to be Fallout seventy six. I thought you were going to get some other stuff, you know, like Fallout four included or whatever. And yeah, that. that's not like three uh, quid to buy separately. <laughs> Uh, it's got private worlds, so you can play in a private world exclusively for you and up to seven friends, if you can find them. Uh, a scrap box, unlimited storage, uh, survival tent. It's all very, uh, you know, like, I don't know what support this game has gotten over the past, um, I don't even know now, months, ye a year? Yeah, it's been oh, a year. I don't know. Right? Um, yeah, so yeah, I, yeah, I don't know last, how beneficial uh, this stuff is, but it seems a little steep the price when compared to as jason yeah. pointed out earlier um other subscription services so you know you've got your ea ea access um game playstation pass. plus game pass yeah all those like would you really put 13 dollars a month into fallout like who's the audience thing, well the audience is the people who have remained loyal to this game in spite of its copious problems who are now being told to pay for the privilege of better things and is so, are those few people worth the time that it's taken to, to implement I don't this know. You, could pro you could probably call them all <laughs> yeah. yeah they could probably be in their own little skype chat together this is yeah. this is what happens when you have a management staff that spends too much time freebasing cocaine <laughs> no. They're just no, no. in there red eyed and screaming. Just a oh, hundred dollars a year <laughs> for scrap. Yeah. Just bouncing off the damn walls. I just I mean obviously this game launched in a like a dire state and then it was so they started not even at the bottom but below the bottom. Uh E3 came and I think people got really excited because of like the battle royale. Not really that, but more like the support that was coming and like these expansions and the how, uh, NPCs, which they haven't, they actually delayed. So, like, they've slowly been big, digging themselves out of this hole, and then I feel like, okay, with subscription, it's like, oh, you just dug yourself back in again. You spent a year trying to get out of it, and then just put yourself back in this hole. It's just, it's, like, it just costs, co uh, charging any sort of money for this is, like, ridiculous if you see all the other games that are f it will free to buy, or free to play, and then free to, like, kind of get stuff in. Oh, a dog. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. the dog pulled I just like, looked up and saw a dog. Um, but yeah, and then you, and then you uh, you have this game you already have to buy, and then you have to pay for these like subscription. It's like I uh, I, I don't feel get, like they I needed. I feel like they needed to like complement this with a with a free to play. You know, it hasn't gone free to play yeah, yet. I had something. to Google it because uh, I thought for like some it's not free no. to play. So I thought they were going to make it, you know, like make it free to play, and then for those players that like it, you know, we got a bit of a subscription model going on. But no. It's not. It's ridiculous. not free. They were just being given away in some German retailers. You know when you that, you buy. Oh your, yeah. Just like, <laughs> that's what was I think get a copy of Fallout. Please 76. take it. Yeah. I think what happened was they were supposed to release a uh, like a big update, like the Wastelanders update. Yeah, the Battle Royale. Yeah, and, yeah, and it got uh, it got delayed. But when you have like you know the massive machine that is Bethesda and Vendi Universal. It's like they probably already had this subscription service in the works mm. to release simultaneously. Oh, to, uh, <laughs> the the right. update got postponed, and they were like, "Well, we're, we've already got plans. 
the, the blog post. It's already scheduled. We can't we can't stop it. <laughs> they should have launched yeah. this. They should have done a, a blizzard and launched yeah. it on Friday like, afternoon. You know, like just last minute, yeah. and then run out of the office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shut everything down. Lock the doors. Uh, that's, that's, you know what they could have done is thrown like a, like a quick like Hong Kong. Like cosmetica, <laughs> pro Hong Kong. Like be like, yeah. here's like at the top, like introducing our our new Hong, you know, free free Tibet, free Taiwan, <laughs> free Hong Kong cosmetic collection, and then at the bottom be like exclusively with the <laughs> yeah. Fallout purse. <laughs> Pay well, that that purse. On that bombshell, yeah. let, let's bring it to a close. Uh, that's it for this week's edition of GR Radio. Uh, thank you all for watching. If you're on Twitch, ensure you give us a follow. If you're on YouTube, hit the like and subscribe. Uh, we'll see you again next week for the next episode. In the meantime, you can visit us at GameRevolution.com for all of your gaming and tech needs. Thank you again for listening, and see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye.